This treaty goes into effect today at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And across the country and across the world, people are asked to ring bells. Okay, 12 noon, ring those bells. We have an opportunity to speak up to our elected representatives about this particular nuclear ban. Clearly, the big nine have no intention of signing and ratifying that ban because they'd have to stop making nuclear weapons. But they are being watched by the 51 countries that have signed it and where it is now today illegal to make or sell or uh, maintain any part of a nuclear weapon. How important this is. I've talked to these nuclear scientists. I've looked them in the eye and said, why are you devoting your education, your experience, your expertise, your intelligence to destroying the earth when you could be doing some other kind of job? Because Los Malamos Laboratories is full of these nuclear knuckleheads who are causing a nuclear nightmare. <laughs> keep up the work, keep up the struggle. This is a great day and we need to get Biden in the USA to get on board. We have come here in peace. We are all peaceful. Over there and behind us are paid security, private security guards of General Dynamics. On the other side of this building here are massive warships. The ships that are built here, built by good people, but they're nuclear armed ships. Those weapons aren't installed here, they're installed after the ship leaves the Kennebec River, at least that's my understanding. But armed they are, and a danger to the entire world. This is going to continue on in my generation. It is the climate emergency. This nuclear weapons pose the single greatest threat to the climate. I'm gonna read from a letter written by Ardeth Platty, who was one of the um, organizers that helped to get this uh, ratified by all the nations. Um, she was part of the ICANN organization that I keep hoping for the abolition of nuclear and all weapons for an end to, to all war and the desperation they cause. I hope it will be in my lifetime. She recently died in um, September and I hope that my generation will continue this message of abolishing nuclear weapons, abolishing war, and abolishing violence of all forms within my lifetime. Ardeth was my godmother, and she's a very wonderful and holy woman who is absolutely here with us. I just have to mention the name Sally Breen. This was what she spent her life for, even from her hospital bed she would call Senator Collins around this issue. So I just want us all to hold Sally in our hearts today because this is, this is her day. Thank you. I just, I just feel called to share with you something that Martin Luther King said. We must learn to live together as brothers or we shall all die together as fools. I was extremely excited when they introduced this ban this to the United Nations and when the ICANN group, I watched every minute of their getting the uh, Nobel Peace Prize and it's going on and today is the day that really, really, really matters. The Plowshares Movement has continued to act here at Bath Ironworks. Um, there were two Plowshares actions here. One was in 1991 and one was in 1996. And uh, after the one six, Jorgen, my son, before was speaking, and he spoke about Ardeth Platty. She came up here for three months and organized around the trial in 96 and 97 for, for the Plowshares people. And they, uh, she put on the Festival of Hope and she vigiled both here and down in Portland. And I'd like to read a, a, a a segment of a letter that she sent to me. It seems important to us to remember Phil Berrigan's message. Do not look for results, successes, 
immediate victories, wins, etc., but to be faithful to truth-telling. That truth-telling is done with love, in nonviolent actions, in a spirit of hope. And I believe that's what we're doing here today. We are doing truth-telling. We're standing here speaking the truth and trying to awaken hearts and minds that nuclear weapons are immoral and now they are illegal. These weapons are a plague and a horror on our lives and they need to be eliminated. Thank you very much.